Thank you, Pastor. I think. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. Amen. Uh, open your Bible to Daniel chapter 9, and then I, I gave a few men some of these handouts. You'll have one coming your way. And then because we have the teenagers and some others with us tonight, here's some extras. Okay, and we'll put them on the communion table. If you men run out, they'll be up front here. Okay. Yeah. I was given uh, uh, some wisdom by a man in the church last week, and he said, you know, it would be really great if, if we had a handout. And so I took his wisdom, took his advice, and you've got a handout tonight. So if you're sleepy, this will help you to stay awake, follow along, fill in the blanks. I didn't bring pens for everyone tonight, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, maybe you can borrow one from a neighbor if you don't have one. We've been talking about rightly dividing the word of truth, and in particular, how it is important for us to make a distinction between the nation of Israel and the church. And we don't have time to review everything. I know not all of you have been here for every lesson. Um, but one of the important distinctions we, we began to look at some uh, last week was how that these two groups, the nation of Israel and the church, they have two different futures. And it's important that we rightly divide the Word of God concerning that. We talked about rightly dividing uh, different terminology in the Scripture. We've talked about the future seven-year time of tribulation that is to come upon this earth. We're going to look a little bit more in detail about that time. Uh, that time is called in your Bible Daniel's 70th week. And that's the time in particular that we're going to look at, the phrase we're going to look at uh, tonight with the Lord's help, Daniel's 70th week. Now, you'll, you'll see the blanks. We'll go through those in just a minute. You can fill those in. But just to, just to explain, 69 weeks are in the past tense. Okay? They're, they're already, it's, 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 it's past history. Okay? The 70th week is yet to be fulfilled. It's, it's in the future. And so the time period that you and I live in is a period of time that's been going on for a little over 2,000 years now. In between the 69th and the 70th week, we live in the church age. We live in a time where God is not primarily dealing with the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel was blind in part. Now one day they will be restored, uh, but for now they're blind and God is calling out a bride that is predominantly Gentile. Uh, most of the people that are getting saved now are not Jews, and that's, that's, that's not a, a great, that's not a good thing. Uh, Jews can be saved, but, but when a Jew is saved, they become a part of the church. So whether you're Jew, Gentile, no matter what color you are, no matter what your nationality is, when you're saved, you're a part of the church. And the church is God's program right now, the day that we live in. Uh, in the future, we know that the rapture of the church is imminent. That's why we need to be busy about getting the gospel out. That's why we need to send missionaries, support missionaries, and preach the gospel to every creature because we don't know when the church age is going to end. That, that's, there, that's not a date on God's calendar. We don't know when the trumpet's going to sound and the church is going to be raptured out, so it behooves all of us to be ready. If you've never been saved, you need to get that settled tonight. You need to make sure that your sins are under the blood and that you're ready for heaven. And you need to do that before it's eternally too late. Uh, after the rapture, God is going to begin once again to deal with His people, the nation of Israel. And uh, that, that seven-year period is given several different titles in the Bible. We talked about that last week, how it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. And it, it, that, that term in and of itself should, should be obvious that God is talking about Israel. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. It is the time of great tribulation that is to come upon this earth. It's also the time of Daniel's 70th week. All right, Daniel's 70th week. Let's look, if you will, at the book of Daniel, chapter number 9. And just to get some context, Daniel chapter 9, look, if you will, at verse number 1. Daniel chapter 9, verse number 1. Now, Daniel is ministering. He's prophesying. He is, he is uh, prophesying in the time when the children of Israel are in captivity in Babylon. Okay? And we know that they were to be there for 70 years in, in captivity. And Daniel knows that this time is drawing uh, close to an end. And so he's praying concerning what will be God's will moving forward. And so that's where we're going to pick up Daniel chapter 9, verse number 1. The Bible says, In the first year of Darius the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years 
whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And then beginning in verse 4, all the way down to verse number 19, you have Daniel's prayer. And Daniel is praying a prayer of confession, a prayer of repentance uh, for, for that nation, for the nation of Israel. That's Daniel's people. That's God's people. And Daniel's basically saying, Lord, we, we deserve this. We're guilty. We have sinned and we repent. And he comes to the end of that time. And let's pick up in verse number 20. The Bible says, and whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and, I, and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Verse 24, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The streets shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood and to the end of the war desolations are determined. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So there's, there's a lot in these verses, amen, that we don't have time to get into. But, I, but just to, to make this very simple, okay, because we can get very detailed. Well, someone else could probably get a lot more detail than I could, but I just want to make it very simple. I want to give you tonight eight facts about Daniel's 70th week, okay? Eight facts about Daniel's 70th week. Number one, the first uh, sentence we have here is the people under consideration is the nation of Israel, not the church, Okay, we are primarily concerned in this passage with the nation of Israel, not the church. Notice, if you will, at verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon who? The angel Gabriel speaking to Daniel, and he says, upon thy people and upon thy holy city. He said, Daniel, I'm talking about your people. I'm talking about Israel. I'm talking about the city of Jerusalem. He's not talking about the church here. He, the church wasn't even in existence yet. The prophets didn't understand the church age. So he is talking about the nation of Israel, not the church. That's fact number one. Number two, 70 weeks is given. So your blank there is 70. 70 weeks is given as the time frame in which God will deal with his people. You see that again in verse number 24. Gabriel says, Daniel, there are 70 weeks that have been determined in which God is going to deal with the nation of Israel. Now, if you were here several weeks ago, you know that I emphasized to you that it is important that we interpret the Bible literally. And when God says something, that's what he means. That's what he means. And then I made the statement last week that if the plain sense makes common sense, seek no other sense. And in this instance, the plain sense really doesn't make common sense. We know that a week, 70 weeks, it's not referring to a week of days it's referring to a week of years and i'll take some time to show you what i mean because if we're going to rightly divide the word of truth sometimes the bible won't, god wants us to dig a little bit okay and some things it's not always as it seems on the surface if it makes common sense then seek no other sense but we know that these days are not right because verse number 25 talks about messiah the prince is going to be cut off and it gives the, the days there in weeks, seven weeks and three score and two, which is 62 weeks. Well, that didn't happen weeks after this prophecy. It happened centuries after this prophecy. Okay? So when, when we find this term in verse 24, 70 weeks, okay, he's not talking about uh, 
fact number three, these weeks are weeks of years. So there's your blank in number three. These weeks are weeks of years. They are not weeks of days. Okay, weeks of years. Now, in Scripture, a day does not always mean a day. Now, many times it does. When God created the world, he, he defined what a day was. And, and the evening and the morning were the first day, so on and so forth. 24-hour period. But you find phrases in the Bible such as the day of the Lord is at hand. And that's not necessarily talking about a 24-hour period. So there are times in the Bible when a day does not equal a day. There are times in the Bible when an hour does not necessarily equal 60 minutes. When Jesus would say, well, my hour is not yet come. So he's not necessarily talking about a 60-minute time period. We know that when Jesus' hour was come, he hung on the cross for more than an hour. It was dark for three hours. Okay? And so a, a day is not always a day, an hour is not always 60 minutes, and a week is not always seven days. Now, we don't have time to go there, but the first time you have the word week mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 29. I've referenced that. You can look at it when you get home. In Genesis 29, it's the story of Jacob. And Jacob goes to serve uh, for the love of his life, who he thinks is going to be Rachel. And he agrees with Laban to serve for how long? Seven years, right? And so he served for seven years, and here comes the wedding day, and he lifts up the veil, and it's, behold, it's Leah. It's not Rachel. And so you'll find this phrase in Genesis chapter 29 where Jacob was told, hey, you know what? If you want Rachel also, you're going to have to fulfill her week. You're going to have to fulfill her week. That's the first time week is mentioned in the Bible, and it's referring to a time period of seven years. And we know that Jacob had to, hey, that was a long work week, amen. He had to work seven years uh, to get Rachel uh, the, the love of his life. Uh, you'll also find this when you find, uh, you can cross-reference Numbers 14, 34, and Ezekiel 4, where you'll find that a day uh, equals a year. Now, when the children of Israel were sent to spy out the land of Canaan, God's promised land for them, uh, it took them 40 days. They took 40 days to spy out that land, okay? And most of those spies, 10 of them came back with an evil report. Joshua and Caleb, they, were, they came back with a good report. They were ready to take the land. But we know that those evil spies, they discouraged the hearts of God's people, and the children of Israel neglected. They did not. They failed to go into the promised land at that time to, in, in, in history. And because of that, God calls them to wander in the wilderness for how long? For 40 years. And here was God's reasoning. He said there would be a, a, a year for every day. Every day that those spies went and spied out the land, he said, you're going to walk a year for every day. And, and they did. They wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. And so we see this principle of the, the weeks of years in the Bible. So number four. Now, get out your calculator, right? Here we go. Number four. Therefore, one week equals seven years. Okay? A week of years. One week equals seven years. And that's where we get the Daniel's 70th week. The tribulation period, the future tribulation period is going to be a time of seven years. It's, it's the last week that's to be fulfilled in Daniel's 70 weeks. 69 are past. Okay? The 70th week is yet to be fulfilled, and it's going to last for seven years. Okay? So number four, one week equals seven, seven years. So 70 weeks would be how many years? Somebody blurt it out. 490. All right, I think I heard all kind of numbers. Amen. <laughs> 490. Uh, 490. So 70 weeks is 490 years. Okay, so that's the big picture, 490. Number five, the first 69 weeks or 483 years, they are past tense. Okay? The first 69 weeks, 69 times 7 is 483. That's past tense. Look, if you will, at verse number 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Okay, Seven weeks plus 62 weeks is 69 weeks. Okay, And so God said there's going to be 69 weeks from the time that the, 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 the decree is made to rebuild the temple and rebuild the city until Jesus Christ comes and is cut off, he said there's going to be 69 weeks. That's 483 years. Okay? That's all past it. That's already happened. And just this, it's fascinating that, so, so number seven, I'm sorry, let's go back to verse, uh, number six there. Seven weeks 
Number six, seven weeks or 49 years are for the rebuilding of Jerusalem in troublous times. Okay? You see that in verse number 26. The, the, uh, the street, the last phrase of verse 25, last phrase of 25 says, The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. You see that? Now, if you want to read about that, you can turn to the book of Nehemiah and read Nehemiah chapter 3, 4, 5, and 6, and you'll see that indeed that city was rebuilt in troublous times. I mean, they were opposed, the enemies were upon them, and it took, it took um, 49 years. That was seven weeks. That's how long it took for them to complete the temple, the city there. Okay? All right, so that's number, that's number five. Number six, that was number six. Number seven, all right, you with me? Number seven. 62 weeks or 443 years are from the end of the rebuilding until the Messiah be cut off but not for himself. So the, the blank there is Messiah on number seven. And you find that in verse number 26. Okay? Now, the first 69 weeks were fulfilled to the very day. It's fascinating. You can read about it. Look it up. And so I won't get too detailed in this, but 69 weeks, if you look under letter A there on the number 7, 69 weeks is 483 years, okay? 483 years, if you multiply that by the days in a year, and on the Jewish calendar, you had 360 days in a year, okay? Not 365, 360. 30 days every month for 12 months, 360 days in a year. So that gives you your total of days, which was 173,880 days. Now, Genesis 7 and the verses I've referenced there teaches us that the Bible interprets a month as 30 days. Okay, and it gives a time period of Noah, and there's a time period of five months that equaled 150 days. So that's e easily 30 days a month. So if you begin, this is interesting, if you begin from the day in history that it is said that Artaxerxes made this decree, it was on March the 14th of 445 B.C. That's letter C. And if you start counting for it in history these days... Okay, the day runs out, I think it's April the 6th of 32 A.D. Historians tell us, okay, that was the very day that Jesus comes riding into the city on the donkey in Jerusalem. Now, isn't that fascinating? I mean, that's the very day that Jesus enters Jerusalem. I mean, that's got to be coincidence, right? Listen, God, God's got this thing, listen, detailed. And we know that when he came, listen, they said crucify him. He was their Messiah. They said, we don't want anything to do with him. He said, he's blaspheming. He's calling himself God. And so there was 69 weeks took place from the time that God said, all right, you can go back and restore your city until the time that Jesus rode in and he was cut off. So that's all past tense. Okay? When that happened and when Jesus died upon the cross for our sins, God stopped the clock. Okay? God's prophetic clock, it stopped. All right? It will begin again the moment that we're taken out in the rapture. Okay, but right now, listen, right now that the clock has stopped. Okay, so, so, so a lot of people all, all across our land, they're looking in vain for trying to figure out dates and trying to set dates for Jesus' return. The clock has stopped. Okay, it's not for us to know the times and the see. Jesus told his disciples that when he was ascending. He said, listen, this is what you need to do. You need to be witnesses in all the world. Basically is what he told them. That's what you need to do right now. That's what we need to do because the clock has stopped. Now, one day it's going to start again, and if 69 weeks are already passed, how many weeks do we have left? We got one week. We got seven years that are yet future. So look, if you will, at number eight. The last week, which is Daniel's, Daniel is the blank there, Daniel's 70th week is yet future tense. Look, if you will, at verse number 27. Now, a lot of things are going to happen in that 70th week. The Antichrist is going to come on the scene. He's going to make a covenant, okay, with, with the nation of Israel, with the world, and things will be in relative peace for three and a half years. In the midst of that week, in the middle of that week, three and a half years, he is going to break that covenant, and literally all hell is going to break loose. The devil is going to be cast out of the heavens onto the earth, and man, I'm telling you, he is going to punish the nation of Israel, and he's really going to make life very difficult for them the last three and a half years of that time. Look, if you will, at verse number 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Okay, so he's going to make a covenant, say, for seven years I'm going to do this and make promises. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even to the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Jesus refers to this time as the abomination of desolation. Okay? 
halfway through that week, okay? It, it, it's, it's downhill from there in a major way. Now, turn with me and let's cross-reference a few verses in, in Revelation, okay? So go with me there to Revelation chapter number 12. Everybody doing all right? Amen. Amen. All right, Revelation 12. So Daniel's 70th week is talking about a future time that is yet to come. It will be the seven-year tribulation that's to come upon this earth. And in the middle of that week, the covenant's going to be broken. The Antichrist is going to go back on his word and all hell is going to be broken loose. And we find a few terms here in the book of Revelation that gives us a time period of half of that week. Okay, three and a half years. If you double three and a half years, you get seven. Okay, notice if we go to Revelation 12... Verse number 6. And the woman, this is talking about the nation of Israel, okay, is the woman here. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. One thousand two hundred and sixty days, okay? That's 42 months, okay, which is three and a half years. Okay, and God said that woman, okay, that's, that's a picture there of the nation of Israel. They're going to flee into the wilderness and God is going to, he's going to protect them. All right, they, I mean, they're going to be running for their lives and they're going to be persecuted, but God's got a place for them to go for three and a half years. And that's why Jesus told them, hey, when you see that abomination of desolation set up, you need to run for the, for the wilderness because God's got a place there where they can find some safety. And that's where they are to stay for how long? A thousand, two hundred, and three score days. Okay, that's three and a half years. Now turn with me, if you will, to verse number, uh, let's look at verse 13, I believe. 13 and 14. Revelation 12, 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Here's the devil persecuting the nation of Israel. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished, notice this, for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Now, chapter 12, verse 6 said 1,260 days. Verse number 14 says a time and times and half a time. Okay, so, uh, the, you know, you say, well, I'm confused. All right, a time, that's one. All right, so if you have a time, is one, and you have times... That's, that's two times. So you have a time and times and then a half a times. So you have one plus two plus a half is three and a half, right? A time and times and half a time, all right? Three and a half years. Turn with me, if you will, to chapter 13, verse number five. And you see the same, uh, you see the same time frame referenced here. Revelation 13, five. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, Power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. So all, all of those figures, 42 months, the time, times, half a time, 1,000, 200, three score days. You double all of those, you get the Daniel 70th week. You get seven years, right? So I told you you going to need your calculator. That, that's why I give you a handout so you can write it down and take it home and figure it out. Because that's a lot to process, okay? I want you to go back to Daniel, and I just want to reemphasize something, okay? It's very, very clear that the purpose of this time period is primarily God dealing with Israel the na as a nation, not the church, okay? Daniel 9, look if you will, again, I'm sorry, verse number 24, okay, verse 24. And what we're going to have here is the per here's the purpose. God's going to say, you know what, this is the purpose of these, these 70 weeks. And we're going to see that these cannot apply to the church, okay? There's no way. Daniel 9, verse number 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, number one, to finish the transgression. Now, our, our transgression's finished. When Jesus hung on the cross, John 19, 30 says that he cried, it is finished. Our, our sins are paid for. The, the, the transgression for the church is, 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 is paid for. It's finished, okay? But God's dealings with Israel... And their national sin, that's not finished. He said, that's going to take 70 weeks. Okay? So that's number one. Number two, and to make an end of sins. 
Jesus made an end of our sins. Amen. He, he, made it, he, he bore our sins upon his body on the tree. And he put an end to it. My sins are gone. There's nothing in the future uh, concerning my sin that, ha that has, still has to be paid for. Jesus paid it all 2,000 years ago in Calvary. Amen. Now, the nation of Israel, he has not made an end of sins. Okay? And that's going to be this time of tribulation. Remember, we defined tribulation the last time we were together. And how that word tribulation has the idea that they're going to go through trouble with the, with the purpose of making them better. He's going to allow them to go through this last week to make an end of sins. Okay, number three. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. Well, I've, we've been reconciled to God. We've been completely reconciled. The moment that you trusted Jesus as your Savior, you have been reconciled to God. Okay? So there is no reconciliation that's left for the church. So that's simple. Number four. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. Well, if you're saved, you have that. If you're saved, you're a part of the church, you have the everlasting righteousness of Jesus Christ. That has been imputed to your account. He took your sin and exchanged, he gave you his righteousness. And that righteousness is everlasting. So we're not talking about the church here in Daniel 9. Okay? The church is not going through the tribulation period. Okay? We're going to get raptured out. and We need to be busy. Amen. Look, if you will, next phrase, number five. And to seal up the vision and prophecy. Okay? During this 70th week of Daniel, the church isn't even going to be here. We're, we're going to be raptured out during that tribulation period. So there's nothing left to seal up and, and there's nothing left there. To, there's no vision. There's no prophecy left there to seal up. The church is, well, we're, we're history as it concerns uh, this time period on this earth. We're going to be in heaven. So there's nothing left there to seal up. And then lastly, number six, and to anoint the most holy. Okay, Jesus is going to come back. Listen, the Jews, they have a Messiah. He's king of the Jews, all right? And he's king of kings and lord of lords. But to us, the church, he's our bridegroom. He's our savior. He's the head of the body, right? So it's very, very clear, very obvious. Listen, Daniel's 70th week, that's the nation of Israel, okay? I hope it's been a help. I hope it's been uh, an encouragement to you. Consider this, okay? If, if someone here or someone ever approaches you about, well, you know, the church, we're going to have to go through tribulation. You know, uh, uh, why, why does the church think that they're so good that they can't go through tribulation? Well, listen, just, I want you to think about this for a minute, okay? Let's, let's just think about this. If, if the church had to go through the tribulation, here's what it would mean, okay? There's a lot of people that's been saved and they're dead, right? They're, they're with Jesus now. They're, they, listen, their body, we, their body is buried their soul, listen, they're with Jesus. Okay. If the church is going through the tribulation, the church is the body of Christ. It's not divided. Right? We're one body, not divided. So if the church is going through the tribulation, that means everyone who's died before us, they're going to have to somehow figure out a way to get back down here and go through it with us. Right? That's not going to happen. Listen, when you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, it's, just, it's just not going to happen. All right? There, there's several other proofs. Listen, I, I hope that the last few, few times we've been together, you, you've been helped. Uh, you've been encouraged maybe to read, study your Bible. Listen, a lot of things are on the surface and they're easy. But Jesus told, uh, told I believe, the Pharisees in, in John 7, search the Scriptures. Sometimes you've got to dig. Sometimes you've got to study. For in them you think you have eternal life. God's not going to give a lazy man wisdom and understanding and knowledge. Sometimes he wants us to get in there, compare. And we started off with 2 Timothy 2.15. Study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Father, help us tonight. Thank you for your word. I pray that you would help it to find a lodging place in our heart. Lord, not in our head. Lord, we can have all these facts in our head and we can, we can boast and, and, and become proud and high-minded. Lord, we're nothing. The only knowledge and wisdom that we have is because you've chosen to reveal these things to us. And I pray that these things would find lodging place in our heart. Help us to understand that our time is short. Our time is uncertain. And Lord, we must be busy about getting the gospel out. Thank you for the encouragement of, Lord, our missionary guests. And thank you for the encouragement of being able to partner with them. God, I pray for your will to be done the remainder of this evening. In Jesus' name, amen.